thought I would take a moment to record a, a video that explains how the free version of Hoboware interacts with the RX3000 product. The RX3000 is a different type of logger in that it does not create data files. It stores data from its sensors temporarily and then transmits that data to Hobolink and Hobolink uses that data to fill a database. So Hoboware, the typical functionality of Hoboware to launch, configure, read out, does not apply to the RX3000. If you click on launch device, you get an error message, does not support this action. Read out, same message. So it it only, Hobo, you use Hoboware to configure the device, the RX3000, for operation on your Ethernet or Wi-Fi network, or you can use it if you're installing your own SIM module. You can put the SIM information in, and there's an instruction sheet on doing that on the RX3000 webpage. This is a RX3000 Wi-Fi device, so I want to show you how to configure that Wi-Fi module to communicate over your network. You have to use Hoboware to configure the RX3000, the Wi-Fi version, in order to get it to communicate. If this was an Ethernet device and your network supported DHCP, which is Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, which automatically assigns IP addresses to devices that are connected to an Ethernet network, if your network supports DHCP and you have an RX3000 Ethernet, from the factory, it should be plug and play. You should be able to connect your sensors, connect up your Ethernet cable, connect up your power, and click, uh, press the start button on the front of the um, logger, and it will communicate and connect to Hobolink. If your Ethernet network does not support DHCP, if you have to select a uh, or in, uh, put in a static IP address, you, you can use Hoboware, the free version, to do that. The Wi-Fi device you have to configure for your network or it will not communicate. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. We have the RX3000 connected to our USB port and Hoboware is uh, recognizing it so we can see it there. It's connected. So in order to communicate with this, we have to go to Device and Manage RX3000. And this is about the only functionality that Hoboware can offer with the RX3000 device. So here the RX3000 manager is loading and it's talking to this device over the USB bus. So it has two halves to the, to the page, latest conditions, where we can see the status of the sensors and the battery. This particular device has a temperature and relative humidity sensor attached. It has a four channel analog module with uh, the, the, the channels are not configured and we can check the battery level. Uh, to refresh these, there's a refresh button right here we can press and it goes out and it scans the bus and it should populate these with the current conditions that it sees. So there's our temperature, our relative humidity and our battery level. Again, we have Hoboware configured for US units so it is coming across as, as degrees Fahrenheit. The other half of the screen shows us device information, the status of the logger. It's currently not logging. It was configured for wrapping. Here's the name of the device, the serial number, the model number, and the firmware version. If we click on communications, this tells us what service plan is currently installed in the logger. And this logger has the 06 plan installed. So in order to configure this device to operate over our network, we go up to our actions toolbar here at the top of the screen right there little uh, tool icon click on actions and we'll get a menu and we can access the configuration for network for the network here so for the Wi-Fi we need to put in the network name we have to select what type of security suite we're using and we have to put in the security key or passphrase this module, neither the module nor Hoboware have the ability to scan for available networks. Um, your smartphone can do that. Your laptop can probably do that. Your, your tablet 
could probably do that, but this device cannot. This is an industrial grade Wi-Fi module that doesn't have the ability to scan for available networks. You can use your wife, you can use your smartphone or your laptop or your tablet to identify the network you want to communicate with, and then you can type that name in here. It's got to be it's got to be the right case, you know, uppercase, lowercase, the right number of spaces, etc. You also have to put in the security type and the security key, as we said. From the factory, use, use DHCP is enabled. If you have to put in a static IP to get over your Wi-Fi network, you have the ability to do that. You can uncheck that and put in all your pertinent information, your IP address, your static IP address, your subnet mask, all of that information. If you don't know what that is and you're in a, a facility that um, has an IT department, you need to get that from your IT manager. The Ethernet version of this device doesn't have this Wi-Fi a specific section here. It does come from the factory that uh, enabled for to use DHCP. So if your network supports that, you can you'll be it'll be plug in play basically. Plug in your sensors, plug in your Ethernet cable, plug in your battery, and you should be good to go.